uh, these historical call detail records. These phone, these phone records, uh, what does the CAS team uh, have the capability to do with it? Based on the call detail records and the contemporaneous tower list, I can determine the approximate location of a device when a call or text was made or when other events occurred, depending on what type of records I have. And, and, and basically, these cell phone companies uh, maintain these business records uh, for their own purposes. The law enforcement, like the CAS team, is able to use them uh, for a different purpose, to give the location of a cell phone device. Is that fair to say? Yes, sir, the approximate location. Um, and the types of records, you mentioned called detail records, but does that also include uh, timing advance records? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, what specialized training and experience um, do you have to be able to do something like this? Uh, initially, I've had, I've had over 400 hours of training. That training has been from other FBI agents, outside agencies or companies on how radio frequency or RF energy works, which is how a cell phone communicates with the cell tower. But most importantly, I've been trained by the engineers from all the major service providers in the United States, uh, AT&T, T-Mobile, Verizon, on how a cell phone works, how a cell phone interacts with the network, and how the network is designed and built and operates. And how long have you been doing this as a member of the CAS team? I uh, took my first training in 2007. CAS became a unit in 2012, uh, and I was certified in 2014. And, and you told us that you're uh, part of the Dallas office. Is this CAS team something that is, uh, I guess, within the United States, multiple mm -hmm. locations? Yes, sir. There are about approximately 70 certified CAS agents and task force officers throughout the country. Uh, in Texas, there are five of us now. Uh, we just recently, maybe a month ago, got another agent certified in Dallas. But for several years, I was the only one in Texas. Uh, do you have any kind of estimate how many times that you've been asked or have reviewed um, records such as the ones you're describing and approximated a, a, a cell phone location from that data? Thousands of times. Has that led you to testify? Um, I guess you said you were at one point the only agent in Dallas, so did that kind of spread you out or, um, around the courthouses here? Yes, sir. I've testified over 80 times in both state and federal court throughout Texas and several other states. Um, you talked about your training, your experience, and your background. Um, concerning all that and, and your real life experience, have you found this type of analysis to be reliable? Yes, sir. Um, and so what specifically do you base that on? Uh, I base it on my real world experience of taking historical call detail records and then being able to locate a device to locate that kidnapped victim, the missing person, the homicide victim, uh, fugitives. I use these records. The CAS unit uses it probably almost daily to locate individuals based on their cell phone data to locate that device. And, and you already told us, uh, you know, with your training from the actual uh, phone carriers, so um, the knowledge that you've gained and learned from the cell phone carrier themselves, um, does that also um, give you that confidence that, that what you're doing is reliable? Yes, sir. We have a yearly recertification, and we will bring in representatives, engineers, and other representatives from all the service providers yearly, uh, so we can know kind of what's the upcoming, like when 4G was starting to roll out, now that 5G is starting to roll out, how that's going to affect the networks, how that's going to affect what records we're going to receive from the phone companies, issues like that. And including in that training, is that from the cell phone companies telling agents like yourself how to interpret those records? Yes, sir. Um, you mentioned real-world uh, real experiences. Um, have there been occasions where you have reviewed uh, call detail records, time advance records, and um, during an ongoing investigation where that's been used to actually find a victim or to locate or apprehend a suspect. Yes, sir. I've recovered kidnapped victims and found fugitives and located person, missing persons using this real time. And have there been multiple occasions where you've reviewed independently uh, these types of cell phone records and then found out that your conclusions uh, were corroborated by other types of evidence, such as video evidence or witness statements. Yes, sir. Um, that happened often or just a few times? Very case dependent, but fairly often. Um, is that something you also consider in telling us that, you know what, this is reliable? Yes, sir. Um, 
Agent hey, Seven, were you asked to review uh, cell phone records of a phone number uh, belonging to Dilich Mia Mir, 972-674-7527? Yes, sir. Karen, my first witness. So I'm going to show you what's been marked as the exhibit 319. Uh, do you recognize this exhibit? Yes, sir. And, and how do you recognize this? Uh, this is a disc uh, that has, contains the, the records that I use for my analysis. And state exhibit 320. Uh, do you recognize this?
Agent, what do, and I'm showing Agent page 7 where it says January 30th, 2018, 10.05 a.m. Uh, Agent, what do those, those radio bars signify? That's the time in advance. Okay. Where does it show the possible distances that the cell phone could be? That's the distance from the tower of that arc, and then it's written next to the distance based on the time. Okay. Uh, is it, isn't it true that it's possible that these distances could be much greater than that? No, sir, not based on the time in advance. Time in advance. Now, if it was just a CDR on a cell site, I can only say the phone was in the coverage area of that particular tower. Based on the time in advance, that also gives me distance from the tower. So there's no way that, that, a, that a cell phone can be further away uh, than where, the, where it's depicted on this uh, image? Based on the time in advance, no, sir. And the time in advance is the system, is the methodology you use, correct? No, sir. The time in advance is one of the records I receive from T-Mobile. Okay. What I'm asking you is, is it possible that regardless of what methodology you used, time in advance, is it possible, uh, uh, physics-wise or uh, radiography-wise, that this cell phone could be further away it is depicted by these radiating circles. No, sir, because the time in advance measures the time it took the signal to go from the tower to the cell phone and back and that reduce that distance. Okay. The, on page four, you have images that look like a baseball diamond, so to speak, first and third base. Well, sir, that's showing the coverage area of the cell tower. The pilot. Yes, sir. Thank you. That was tough. Okay. So assuming that, and what I mean by first and third base, you get a point and then a line radiating, pointing to the left, call it third base, and another line calling it first base. G generally speaking. Yes, sir. That, that's showing the 120 degree arc coverage of that cell. All right. Thank you. Now, uh, isn't it true that those, that that line is more of, in, in actuality, is more of a blob area or an undulating area than a, than a straight line. Isn't that true? In, in actuality and in practice. Yes, sir, if you let me explain. Y yes or no question. Sir, I can't answer that with a yes or no question. Objection, Your Honor. Uh, I'm asking you a yes or no question. Isn't it true? I'm going to object. The witness has stated this is not a yes or no response. And, Mr. Watson, if he cannot answer that yes or no, can move on, or you can ask him in a different way, or rephrase it. But I believe in the structure of the question. Maybe it could not have been answered in a yes. Let me rephrase that. It, sir, isn't it true that in in practice and in reality, this line is not always a straight line? Correct. Yes, sir. So it's so it can be more wavy. Correct. Yes, sir. Or more of a blob. Correct. Mm -hmm. I don't like the term blob, but yes, sir. Okay. So that's not accurate uh, to to depict how things can be in real life. It's, it's accurate because of the reputation of the approximate coverage area of that tower. But a minute ago, you said that it could be wavy or like a blob. You didn't like that line. But is that correct? Yes, sir. The actual footprint on the ground will be different. Thank you. Sir, um, different things can affect a signal coming back and forth, correct? Yes, sir. Building, correct? Yes, sir. A building can? Yes, sir. Temperature? Very minimal, if at all. But it, but it can affect it? Very minimal, if at all. Is that a true or false statement? Can it affect it? Some yes, I'm not objecting. He answered the question. Can we continue on with the next question? So minimal means some, correct? Yes, sir. Thank you. Tone, tone. Your Honor, uh, if, if the witness refuses 
to to uh, answer her question, uh, I, I'm going to question as best I can, Your Honor. And you can't object, I say, the tone in which you're using. You may continue. Uh, uh, whether or not the phone is inside or outside. Yes, sir. Uh, terrain. Yes, sir. And these things can affect the the reported for the data, correct? Yes, sir. It can affect the coverage area of the tower. Okay, thank you. And the accuracy of the distance, correct? Yes, sir. The distance can sometimes be a little long. And sometime, uh, er, earlier you mentioned uh, with the prosecutor that uh, oftentimes it has corroborated other evidence uh, in a criminal case or an investigation, correct? Yes, sir. And so sometimes it's not, it doesn't corroborate other evidence, correct? I'm not sure you understand the question, sir. At that time, it is a mobile phone, so I might say it was here. When we get there, that phone is moved. That's a possibility, but the phone will be in the coverage area of that cell tower. Well, but earlier you said that uh, often it corroborates other evidence, correct? Yes, sir. And then sometimes it's not corroborated by other evidence. I guess that's a very broad question, sir. I'm not sure exactly what you mean. Do I have a time when I have cell phone data and video putting the, the subject in an area? The, 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 the device in an area? No, it is cooperated. But if there's a 20 minute gap, then it might not cooperate that data. The cell phone tower data shows a certain phone and not a specific person, correct? No, sir. I, I make it very clear that I'm talking about a device, not an individual. Does the accuracy of this technique rely on a direct line of sight signal path to the cell tower? Not necessarily, sir. The phone will choose the strongest signal with the least amount of interference, generally the closest tower. But if there is a line of sight issue, the phone may choose a farther tower because of the line of sight issue. Yes, sir. So is that an answer? So that answers yes? Yes, sir. So the answer to my question is, does the accuracy of this technique rely on a direct line of sight signal path to the cell tower? And your answer is yes, correct? No, sir, because it doesn't have to be a direct line of sight. Is it true or false that a signal could bounce off a building located a few hundred yards away and still be received by the cell phone? Yes, sir. So if the signal bounces off a building several hundred yards away, and is received by a cell phone, then the RTT slash timing advanced technique would give an quote unquote incorrect distance. The signal actually travels a longer path. Yes, sir, it could give, and that's why I've stated that sometimes the RTT timing advanced data can be a little long. So your answer is yes to that, correct? Yes, sir. Does your presentation you prepared assume that there is a direct line of sight between the phone and the tower? No, sir. If you had to, if you had to in, in your line of work, does your profession or your colleagues, is there an accepted estimate of accuracy on this data? What do you mean by, I guess I'm asking, the phone will be in the coverage area of the cell tower. Well, yeah, okay, but what about, for instance, let's use distances. 500 yards, 1,000 yards, give me some examples of some distances. Sir, it all depends on where you are on the planet. If you're in an urban area. Let's pick North Dallas where all this happens. Sir, towers are generally closer there, so a coverage area tower would be between half a mile, 
three quarters of a mile. If you get in a rural area, that can be a much larger area. Okay. So these distances that you depicted in your PowerPoint presentation, they range from a short to a long of what, approximately? I'd have to look through my report, sir, but I have some very short distances and I have some slightly longer, but the average, and that's all depending on where you are on the planet, but 0.24 miles up to just under two miles, depending on which tower is read. Okay, so you say some of them are up to two miles, correct? Yes, sir. Isn't it true that, for instance, on some of those reports, it could be farther than is depicted by your outer radius half circle? No, sir, because I'm taking the aggregate of when I get multiple towers giving me time in advance data. I look to where those arcs are crossing, and that's the most likely area where that device could be. If I have a large area of time, this device could be mobile. It could be moving inside that area during that entire time. It is a moment in time when that is depicted. Did you triangulate? Uh, you know what triangulation means? Yes, sir. Does this methodology use triangulation? No, sir. Uh, tell the court what triangulation means. Triangulation is basically taking known distance and known direction from several known points. Uh, if I was, when I was in the Marines, uh, we used triangulation or back atoms all the time. You, the helicopter drops you and you're supposed to be in this LZ and you're not in the LZ they're supposed to put you in. So I take it and I go, I know where that mountaintop is on the map. I know where that mountaintop is. I know where that water tower is. I take back azimuths, or I direction from there, take those back azimuths, look where those lines cross, and that gives me, then I can determine roughly where I am. And using, let's let's use two. Uh, sir, can I continue answering the question? Sure, sure. So, in what you're asking with the time advance, time advance is the time. I wasn't at, uh, your Honor, non-responsive. I wasn't asking about time, time in advance or see whatever he's talking about now. I was asking about triangulation. And if I'm not mistaken, you were asking him to explain to the court what triangulation was, and that is what he was doing. He might have been using other terms, but I think if I'm not mistaken, then he was trying. Your to Honor, he asked me if I use triangulation. Yes. And then he asked me what triangulation was. Yes. I never answered if I used triangulation. I said no. And then I'm trying to explain how the time in advance works. Um, basically, he asked me two questions. I'm trying to answer those questions. And so your the honor? first, hold on. So the first question is, are you done answering what triangulation is? Yes, ma'am. All right. Now, Mr. Watson, ask your next question. All right. Thank you, Judge. You're welcome. So, Agent, um, isn't it true that using two points which is which can be used in triangulation, correct? Yes, sir. Is more accurate than using one point, correct? Yes, sir. Pass the witness. Any further questions? Yes, yes. Would that be helpful to the jury in seeing the graphical representation uh, on a map of Billy Jameer's cell phone device at uh, certain days and times compared to the cell phone tower being utilized? Yes, sir. Your at this time, state would offer state exhibit 320 for all purposes. And Judge, may I, uh, yes. may I show the court the, the parts that I cross examined the page on? Yes. Are you objecting to certain pages, the entire exhibit? No, I'm clear. just, well, so she can make her decision, I want to show this to her. So yes. you're objecting to? I'm yeah. objecting to this whole uh, exhibit, number 320, but I want to show you what what we referenced on the straight lines that we talked about being oh, a wild baseball line. Baseball line, yes. Correct. And that's included in this report. So page four. No, Page seven shows the quote-unquote baseball drawings. 
page eight shows the quote unquote baseball drawings. Page nine. Page 10, 11, and that's the gist of it, Your Honor. There are many drawings on here that quote unquote show the quote unquote baseball diamond drawings that uh, that we submit is uh, is not accurate, and uh, we object under uh, relevance confusion four of uh, uh, four hundred three, uh, and it contains evidence. It contains depictions that are not accurate to his report or uh, mistake or mislead the underlying scientific evidence, particularly the portions regarding the direct lines depicted in the quote unquote baseball diamond drawings. And we object under. 403, uh, it's, it's misleading, it gives undue, uh, undue weight to his opinion, uh, because he testified, and I believe there's, you can, the court can draw a reference that he can, he can testify as to his opinions or beliefs without using a, uh, this, this uh, Exhibit 320, uh, it's, it gives undue weight to his opinion, and we object to his opinion in, in total, and then secondly, we object to the 320. We also object subject to testing for validity. It relies on the subjective interpretation of the expert. It has not been published and what was not subject to peer review by other experts in the field. It has an un unacceptable rate of error. And the question calls for an opinion that is unreliably based. The witness testified that a triangulation method is more accurate than a single uh, point of reference and that with the different instances that can be longer or further away due to the instances that we talked about when I was questioning him is his report should not be admitted, and second, that secondly, his uh, well, his opinion should not be admitted, and we object to that for reasons stated before. And his uh, his report, aka exhibit, I submit to the court that's more of a of a prop or an exhibit that is uh, gives undue weight to his uh, testimony. And in some ways, you might call it puffing judge, and uh, we object to that. And we also object that it, it, uh, it violates his due process rights to have certain pieces of evidence uh, given more weight uh, than would normally be given in a jury trial. Uh, Thank you. Uh, do you have a response, Judge? Yes. Uh, Judge, yes. Um, Exhibit 320 from Agent Sedgwick stated that it would aid the jury in understanding his testimony. Um, he has discussed his qualifications, his experience and training in using call detail records and timing advance records to provide an approximate lock, uh, location. He's also told the court based upon um, those records, he's used them in real world. Real world experience itself has proven to him and other agents to be reliable. And he's also stated to the court that um, during his time reviewing these records and testifying and um, aiding 
other agencies, that these records have been corroborated often by other pieces of evidence, such as video or witness statements. So um, we told you about his training from the cell phone carriers himself. He said he's used it in real life, and he said his real life experience sometimes is corroborated by other pieces of evidence. Um, I didn't have an opportunity to go into um, the specifics of, of how the cell phone works and what he can tell you about that, um, because the defense counsel took the witness on more dire. He's more than capable of doing that. I plan on doing that. Um, and also with the specifics of the timing advance records, um, I did have an opportunity to um, go through each page and discuss what he would testify to or his ultimate opinion would be um, in regards to the cell phone tower being utilized by the defendant's cell phone device and the approximate location of the cell phone device um, as to the cell phone tower being utilized. He would provide an estimated distance um, within an arc, not an X marks the spot, not, not a specific location, but his testimony would be, as indicated in this report, that the phone is, is in this approximate location anywhere within this arc, um, which is X distance from the cell phone tower. And so based upon all that information, and, and uh, we would ask that this be admitted for all purposes. Your objection is overruled and 320 would be admitted for all purposes? Yes, ma'am. Anything further, Mr. Nelson? Uh, Commissioner Pablos, Judge? Yes. Hey, Sedwick. Um, Tell us how a cell phone works. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, when your phone's in your pocket and you're not using it and it's on, uh, you call that idle mode. And what that phone is doing, in this case, we're dealing with a T Mobile device. So it's going to look for the strongest signal with the least amount of interference, generally the closest tower, that's a T Mobile tower. Once an all cell tower continuously broadcasting the signal, that's called a control channel. That control channel is always broadcasting, that's the signal the phone's looking for. Once it gets the tower, it sees the best, you can do it. Sorry, that's camping on that tower. It sits on that tower, and the wires can be in there, so information being passed to it. The network will tell it, hey, you're on this tower. Hey, these are the other towers in the area you can see. So if I need to hand you off during a call or after moving, these are the other towers, the other radio frequency you should be looking for to make that smooth connection with the network. and. You know, you move around, you don't drop the call, or you know, the network works. Time in advance is occurs, can occur during a call, during a data session when you're surfing the net using cell tower data, or just while it's in idle mode. And what it does is it gives that steering signal, or not steering signal is the wrong term, but it gives it that distance so it knows this signal and it just creates that time in advance record. Time in advance records. So, you know, exist sometimes, sometimes they don't. Uh, but that time advance gives that distance, and that distance is the round trip time it takes the signal to get from the tower to the cell phone and back based on the speed of light and vacuum. Obviously, there is going to be obstacles. There's going to be a tree, there's going to be a building. So that signal doesn't travel in that state with a straight line. So that's why I stated sometimes that time advance arc can be a little long. In built-up areas, it can be a little longer. Uh, rural areas, it tends to be more accurate, but it can also be very accurate even in a built-up area. But what I can say is that device had to be short of that time in advance line. But I use time in advance just to possibly narrow down the area where the phone device could be, but it is still in that coverage area of the cell tower. And we use that high wedge uh, to display that area. Uh, the cell signal is not a perfect piece of pie shaped. It is a undulating line. Uh, there is overlap between towers. There is overlap between sectors of the tower. So they have that multiple coverage that you can see. And there are ways to, we have equipment that we call the drive test, where I can take equipment and map the actual RF footprint of the cell tower. In this case, I was not able to do that because this case, I was brought in this case in October of this year. This happened back in 2018. The network is not the same. So a drive test would not depict what was in the real world at that time. 
and, 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 and Agent Zemeck, I don't mean to cut you off, but um, ultimately the, the timing advance records and the, and the um, were utilized into interpreting um, and, all, and ultimately um, plotting and mapping uh, the defendant's cell phone device. Is that right? Yes, sir. Okay, and the exhibit that was just admitted said Exhibit 320 uh, would show the representations um, based upon the information you just relayed to the judge. Yes, sir. And Judge, just for purposes of the record, in regards to State Exhibit Number 320, yes. uh, obviously you've uh, heard and we noted our objections for the record, and you overruled those objections. Is that correct? Right? Yes. And so, Ms. Uh, Agent said we'll be able to testify to his findings as well as uh, display the reports of the jury over our objections. Is that correct, right, John? Yes. Okay. For the purpose of this hearing and the record, we're good. We, okay. We can move forward now. All right. So there was a 319 and a 320. Right now, we're going to discuss 320. Correct, Judge. I have an additional witness. I think um, okay. I will testify to the contents of 319. All right. So, are we, can we excuse this witness? For this time, yes, Judge. All right. So, you are excused well, temporarily. Well, yes, sir. Right. Until you will be recalled. Yes, sir. Thank you.